ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حديث حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته كيف حالكم جميعا يا ايها الاخوه اكوا how are you my oh, brothers and sisters alhamdulillah this is the daras of thani the second daras or the second part if you will to the talk that we have given on protecting your home from the shaitan yani we go to the bait من الشيطان. Okay. How do we protect our homes from the shaitan? And alhamdulillah, we have talked about in the first part the hadith from our beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioning that the reading of Surah Al-Baqarah is a means for whereby to protect the home from the shaitan and the prophet was telling us iqra'u surah al-baqarah fi buyutikum to read yani um to read surah al-baqarah in our homes okay to read surah al-baqarah to read surah al-baqarah in our homes as a way to protect ourselves for the possible sallam said that when the shaitan la yadkhul baytan yani qira'at surah al-baqarah that the shaitan does not enter the house wherein surah al-baqarah is read okay fihi yuqra'u wa yuqra'u fihi yani surah al-baqarah um this is something that we should do much as possible constantly review and recite parts of surah al-baqarah don't have to be the entire surah but it should be read throughout the muslim home surah al-baqarah should be something that we should read whether it's an ayah whether it is khamsa ayat whether it's five or ashra or 10 doesn't matter as long as you read some verses of surah al-baqarah in your home it's a means of a protection let alone <clears throat> it contains one of the greatest verses in the book of allah azza wa jalla which is none other than ayat al-kursi which is the ayat of the throne and is the verse 255 in this particular surah that the messenger of allah was sallam has informed us in our authentic hadith that whoever reads ayatu kursi before retiring to bed it will serve as a protection for him or her from the shaitan into the morning from the shaitan to the morning so we see that baqara in and of itself the entire surah is a means to protect the home from the shaitan and then there are verses specifically from the surah itself that protects the home from the shaitan okay so we have been delving in to the five tremendous verses um of this particular surah going over their explanations and the fawaid or the benefits that can be extracted from those particular verses 
using going over this particular verses all right like so we have done verse one and verse two explanation and the benefits to those verses now we're going to move on to verse In these particular verses, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, "Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaybi wa yuqimuna salat wa yu'tuna zakat." Salat wa mimma razaqna hum yunfikun. Verse, but here in this verse, Allah says, "Those who believe in al ghayyib," and we're talking about what is the ghayyib. All right, those who believe in al ghayyib. They perform or establish rather not then perform but they establish on a continuous basis okay they establish the prayer and they spin out of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided them with okay then Allah continues he says still talking about these individuals who possess these particular qualities to make us from amongst them. I mean, he says, "Well, the day you know, be ma unzila ilik, wa ma unzila min kablik." And those who believe in that which has been revealed unto you, meaning to who? To Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. All right, and they believe in those that which has been revealed to those who came before you. Okay, from the messengers and the prophets, they believe in those scriptures as well. And they have absolute certainty and conviction within the hereafter. Okay? Oh, these individuals who possess these particular qualities. This is a tazkiyah from Allah. Alright? So this is a stamp of praise and approval from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising these individuals who have these qualities by saying ulaika ala ulaika ala these such are those these are such are those who are upon guidance from their Lord. Mufliqun and then Allah tells you that they are also those who will be successful. Shirat Imin Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali comment on these verses he says after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Allah mentions about the muttaqin Okay, and we know that the mutaqin, they were those who benefit from the book itself. And they are one they are those who are guided by this book. Alright? So not anyone just guided by the book of Allah Azza wa The people who accept the guidance, the people who adhere to the guidance, they are those who are mutaqun. Okay? No, they are not maqsumi. That should not be misunderstood. They are not people who are professionalists. Individuals who are free without sin. That's not what the book actually tells us. All right. They are mutaqun. And you can be a mutaqai. You can be one who practices a taqwa even if you have sin. Okay. And we have a measurement in our deen to teach us in regards to sin. All right. We know that sin has been divided into two categories. As Ahlul Ilm, the people of knowledge have explained to us in detail. All right, extracting it from both the book and the authentic sunnah. And that is, there are major sins and then there are minor sins. Okay, there are kabair or sagayim. Okay, there are major sins and then there are minor sins. However, Allah Jalla wa Ala have verses in his book that he explains to us, those who avoid the major sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the lesser ones. So the way that we balance the sins is that we try our best to avoid the major ones. And the minor ones, we try our best to adhere to those ahadiths from our beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam to show us how to or to get them forgiven by Allah. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi says, Juma'a ila Juma'a, that the Juma'a to the next Juma'a Right, 
and he mentioned Ramadan, he got Ramadan, and Ramadan to the next Ramadan, all right? <clears throat> and the Salat, okay, and the prayer, all right? Prayer to prayer serves as a means of an expiation for minor sins, not major, but minor sins, okay? This is something that we use as a balance, okay, to deal with sins. Avoid the major ones, inshallah, and try our best not to be persistent with the minor ones, which will also allow them to become major ones. So here, here they mean is saying that the muttaqin, as Allah mentioned about them, they are those who benefit and are guided by this book. Meaning the Quran, بِيَلَّنَا سِفَاتُ هَوْلَى muttaqin. Then here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mentioning that, Allah now clarified to us, and he explains to us, what are the qualities of the muttaqun? Those who possess taqwa, what are the qualities? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions the first quality, the sifatul ula, or the first quality that they have is al-imanu bil ghaib. Okay? They have belief in the unseen. They haven't seen Allah Azza wa Jal. They have saw this alamat. We have seen Allah's signs that indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. But we have not seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, his essence. So they believe in the unseen. Right? <clears throat> As Allah says, Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaib, those who believe in the unseen. I yukiruna bi maghaba anhum min ma akbar Allah bi an nafsi, meaning that they confirm. That which is hidden from them or absent from them, from which, from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed about Himself and His angels, in His books, in His messengers, in the day of judgment, and the divine decree, which we will never be able to understand in full totality, as Ibn Abbas explained so eloquently to us when it comes to the issue of Qadr, the good of it and the bad. And then Shaykh Uthameen says, from other, of the, other than that, from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us from the affairs of the unseen. And okay. The word ghaib is the maslar, the verbal noun of the ismu fa'il, which means ghaib, something which is absent, something which is absent, okay, something which is absent or hidden. That's the first quality of the people of taqwa, that they believe in the unseen. Allah says about them in Surah Al-Mulk, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ Indeed, there are those who have khashya. Khashya وَفَارَكَ بَيْنَهُ وَفَارَكَ بَيْنَ خَشْيَ وَالْخَوْف And the difference between khashya and khawf, all right, which is two aspects of worship, okay? And even though they both might initially mean fear, there's a difference. So when we talk about khawf, then that is a natural fear, something that is tabari. But when we talk about khashya, then that is a reverential fear, which is based upon ilm, knowledge. And this is why you hear Allah Jalla he says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهُ مِنْ إِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ That only the ulama are those who have khashya of Allah, meaning they have a reverential fear of Allah based upon ilm, about, upon knowledge of Allah Jalla wa alam. So here, <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying here that they what? They believe in the unseen. That's the first quality. Okay? The second quality is that they establish the prayer. And it's important to understand the difference between Yusuf. Allah Jalla wa Allah says they establishes the prayer and not that they pray the prayer. Two different things. Because to establish the prayer, it actually indicates consistency. Okay? Alright, you when you pray, you can pray here and there. Doesn't mean you're consistent with the prayer. Doesn't mean that you actually that is always something that you do. Now Allah Jalla wa says they establishes the prayer. They are consistent upon it. Okay? Shirat Amin Muhammad Allah Ta'ala Alayhi says 
This is taken from the statement itself where Allah says, "Wa yuqimu nusala." A yuqimu nubi ala wajh al mustaqim. All right, meaning that they establish upon its correct manner. Kama jaa an Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, just as it had come from the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself, the Messenger of Allah. What's intended by the word salat here is the gents, okay? The type yani, of prayer, the prayer itself. And it includes both the obligatory prayer and the voluntary prayer, okay? It's not just talking about the obligatory prayer only. So it includes both types, okay? It says the third quality of the muttaqun is that they They are those who spin out of that which Allah provided. Now notice Allah Jalla did not just mention yani zakat in this particular verse. And it's important you understand that. Shaykh Taymin is going to point this out for us. He says, Meaning from those things which we have given them of mal, of wealth, Right of money, okay. Yuhrijun, okay. Sometimes mel can refer to monetary, or sometimes it can refer to wealth. And because zakat is something that is not just on money, it's on all different types of forms of wealth, okay. As is on livestock, etc. Right. So yuhrijun min huna yahtamina tukuna tabreed wa tukuna dibiyan. So he's saying that he's going to explain more in detail when he go over the benefits extracted from these verses on this issue in terms of the men. Okay, the preposition men, which is used in this verse, Allah says, Men and ma. But he says, The fourth quality is, I, Shaykh Uthameen says, meaning they are those who believe in all of the books that have been revealed. Here Allah begins with, by mentioning the Quran first, even though the Quran is the last and far as time to be revealed, but Allah begins with it first. Why? Shaykh Uthameen says here, because it is the Muhaymin. Allah calls it that in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allah calls it the Muhaymin. Right? What is the Muhaymin? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that it is a Muhaymin. It is that book which safeguards, which right, safeguards the previous books. So anything that was missing, anything that was lost, all right, anything that was worth keeping or reminding the people you're going to find, or anything that needs to be reminded to the people you're going to find with the book of Allah. Azza wa anything that was abrogated because of the Book of Allah which abrogated a lot of those rules that was for the previous nations that you were fine with the book. But my unzilam in public, Shaykh Taymin says, was intended by this, the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur. The Torah was given to Musa alayhi salatu salam, the Injil to Isa alayhi salatu salam, uh, the Zabur to Dawood alayhi salatu salam, was Suhuf Ibrahim, and the Suhuf that was given to Ibrahim with Musa and other than that. All right, because there are books which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us by name and there are books which he has not mentioned to us. Just like there are messengers which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned to us by name and there are messengers which he has not um, mentioned to us. But the rule that the early man explains to us is that we believe in all of them. We believe in all of the books, whether they was mentioned to us or not. We believe in all of the messengers, whether they was mentioned to us or not. You understand? That's the rule. Okay? <clears throat> Asifa to Khamis, the fifth quality of the muttaqun. All right? So if you want to run around and just give yourself or just praise yourself, then you can't praise yourself without having these qualities. So if you want to run around just giving yourself, you know, you know how quick we are to title or label ourselves. I'm from the muttaqun or I'm a mu'min. I'm from the mu'mini. But there are qualities of the believers and there are qualities of the muttaqun. Analyze these qualities within yourself. Analyze these qualities. The fifth quality is al iqanu bil akhirah that they have absolute conviction that the hereafter is true and everything pertaining to it is true. They believe that the akhirah, the last day, 
everything that precedes this event, everything that's happened after this event on this day, they believe that it would take place. From the belief in the punishment of the grave, heck of the belief of the questioning of the Malakain, from the belief of all of those things that would take place. What's going to happen once they are raised up and they are resurrected? They believe in those things. They believe in all of them. They have absolute certainty. Okay? Just as the fact that they can see their hand, just as the fact that they can breathe, just as the fact of anything, they have absolute certainty this place, this thing will take place. What's intended by that is the resurrection at the death. And that which follows from those things which follows will, ha will take place on Yom Al-Qiyam. From rewards, from punishments, and other than that. So Allah Jalla only mentioned and, sp and, and specifically mentioned having Iqan and the Akira, even though this is already included in Al-Iman al Ghaib. All right? And we talked about the first quality of the Muttaqun, belief in the unseen. Norman Akira and the events that will take place is from the unseen, right? So that's already included. But why did Allah specifically mention it here? Why did he single it out? All right? Shirat Amin mentions that uh, due to its importance. Because having Iman in this event and the events that follows it, it does what? It is supposed to carry you and drive you to do actions which you have been commanded to do, to carry out those things which have been commanded and to leave off those things which are prohibited. So when it says Al-Iqan, having conviction, then it is having Iman which is not or affected whatsoever um, or repelled whatsoever with doubt. Okay? Ula'ik. Shaykh Dimini says that when Allah says Ula'ik, Amushara ilayhi matakatum in atasifu bisifatu khamas. Here, what is being pointed to is that which has been preceded from those who are indulged with these qualities, these five qualities that we mentioned. And we should already be aware of this. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he points towards them in the form of using the ismul ishara, the demonstrative pronoun, which is the plural for the word thalika and tilka, ula'ika, right? Hada and hadihi is ha ulai. Here Allah use ulaiq, right? And he used the the one that's used for distance, like we seen in the beginning of the surah when Allah says Dali Kal Kitab and not had al Kitab. This is not done haphazardly. So Shaykh Taymin explains just like Allah used Dali Kal Kitab to show you the status in the position of the book itself. And that if the book is elevated and their status is elevated, then what about those who cling to it and adhere to it? Their status is also elevated. As we've seen, the Prophet ﷺ would bury people according to what? How much they knew of Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ would elevate the people on their status of what they have the Qur'an. So it raises their rank. Like here, Allah Jalla wa ala is also by using the sigar, yani al boot, is raising their status. Ala huda, ay ala ilmin. Allah said, these are those who are upon guidance, meaning they are upon knowledge, with tawfiq. They are upon knowledge and tawfiq, meaning they have the success given to them from Allah Azzawajal. Right? So Shaykh Thimini says that what benefits us in returns to their elevation upon the guidance is that they traverse upon this path as if they are traverse traversing upon a clear distinctive path which here they do not have any doubt whatsoever you see them turning and inclining towards doing act, acts of the, uh, righteous actions or doing uh, good actions as if it is like a illuminating lamp or light right that's in front of them guiding them with it he says, you find them, for example, reflecting upon the secrets, okay, <laughs> or the vast deep meanings that can be extracted from the legislation of Allah. And it's hikam, it's wisdom. 
his rulings. Here he's talking about those individuals. I mean, it, seems, it seems as he's indicating those people have reached a high level of knowledge in terms of the early math. All right? Upon this path. Because he says, after that he mentions here, that they they know from it, meaning Sharia of Allah, many things which are hidden from the people. And you find them also in the Mayandurun ila Kadai wa Kadri, Kianna may you shahiduna amrafi muslim hati him, heta wa in a sleebu, be ma yadurruhum al yasu'um. And this is important. You find them also that when they reflect and look at Allah's execution and his decree, is as if they are witnessing the affair in regards to their rectification, even if they are being afflicted, afflicted with something that harms them. They understand يعني, the wisdom behind it. So if they're going through a trial or adversity, they are able to comprehend what is the wisdom behind this. They're able to comprehend the benefit of going through that harm and that adversity, right? This is what they're able to do, right? Because they understand that that adversity cannot take place except by Allah's permission. That adversity cannot take place except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that adversity would not last long because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that. Okay? They understand this, they believe this, and they are able to move forward. All right? <clears throat> he says here, They see the adversity. They see the affliction. They see the calamities that Allah has inflicted for them as a means of a maslaha. It's a benefit to them. It is a rectification for them. They don't see it as... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislike them. Allah is angry with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is discontent with them. They don't see it as a means of um, a, a, a bad thing. They actually see it as good. They ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us like this. Because many of us, when we get afflicted with some adversity, which is normally due to our hands, um, we seem somehow agitated or discontent or displeased with Allah. But here, Shikr Taymin is saying, no, these individuals, they see that the affliction is different. They see it as a means of something good, as a means to rectify them from Allah Azza wa Jalla. That's how they look at it, all right? They look at it like that. That attitude is priceless because when you change your perspective on what is actually taking place and what has actually happened to you, it allows you to endure it and cope with it in a better way. You understand? If you notice, for example, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing and subjecting to you this adversity that you're going through because Allah wants to elevate your status. He wants to purify you of the bad and the filth that has emanated from you. He wants to correct your wrongs. He wants to make you a better individual. If you see it in that way, you then won. So while everybody's thinking that you're going through a hardship, you are thanking Allah for the hardship. And you have actually been elevated in that test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he grants you ease after that adversity. But if you don't see the adversity in that manner, and you see it as something as a hardship, and you see it as something you're being discontented, something that you, you're complaining to Allah Jalla wa Ala with, you're criticizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have lost that test. And then you have not won. You have actually lost. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to recognize this, I don't know no other dean that actually teach us to have this perspective <laughs> and to cope with life in this, on, this, on this magnitude. Uh, he says, Allah called that anaru lahum tariq. He says, why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enlightened, he has, he has illuminated, he has enlightened the path for them. All right? So they are upon guidance from their Lord. This is a taskiyah, the highest of taskiyah that you can get. All right? You know, sometimes we want the uh, the imam to praise us, or sometimes we might want the profession, uh, the we might want the professor to give us a praise in a certain discipline or a certain science, so we can say, yeah, we studied this particular topic or something like that. Here is Allah, is what you No one can give you a higher praise than him. Allah is appraising the individuals who are mutakun, who possess these five qualities. He says, ala huda min They are upon a clear guidance, and shikr means that this guidance is knowledge. And it is tawfiq, meaning Allah have guided them and granted them the success to be upon and to act and implement that knowledge. So this is why they are upon guidance from their Lord. 
Shikrat means that it's as if the guidance is that thing which they ride upon, which saves them. <laughs> By way of it, it saves them from destruction. It's like a ship whereby they are saved from drowning. Yeah. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. We ask Allah to give us this. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to make us those who are completely confirmed يعني, with the outcome of this guidance. Because they are upon this. Because their creator, the one who manages the affairs, okay, the one who is really in the driver's seat. And that's one of the things that we are deluded about because we think that what we're, we think that the free will that we have, we are really in control. But in reality, the one who's really in control, the one who created you, the one who actually managed the affairs. This is why in Islam, we don't consider success relatively. We don't believe in the uh, understanding or the concept that has been pushed on us that success is um, monetary, that success is materialistic, or success is this. We don't pit that like that. Because success in Islam يعني, is different. Nor do we confine it to a time. Because you can be 21 and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make you successful. Right? Or you can be 51. Or you can be 61 and you still can be successful. Do you understand? Not in the terms of what society have given us the definition of success. But what Allah has given you. Imagine that. Right? We're going and spending your time thinking that, man, I'm 40 years old or I'm 30 years old and I'm not where I need to post. Or I'm not where I want to be. I'm not in the position. And this is a reminder to myself. But could you recite the book of Allah? Are you Muslim? Do you have shahada? Can you worship Allah Azza wa Jalla? Can you perform the salat? How many people can? That is a success. When you go through something in life, do you not know how to cope with it? Your lens, your perspective of life, is it not there? This is all success. All right? The fact that you can praise Allah Azza wa Jalla. The Prophet Sallallahu tells us that one of the times of, or the signs of the hour is that Allah is going to remove uh, those who have just an atom worth of iman is going to remove them from the earth and it's only going to be the most ashraf, the most wicked of people left on earth. Right? And they're not going to be able, they're not even going to remember Allah as a wajah. Right? Allah, Allah, Allah is a bitch in the hadith. So now they're going to remember that. So imagine the beauty of now that you can say Allahu Akbar. You can say SubhanAllah. You can say Alhamdulillah. Right? And nourishment will be these statements. These statements that we take so light. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, SubhanAllah. These statements that we really don't even ponder and reflect on will be full <laughs> during this time. Or the You understand? So you have to take this in consideration that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you successful on his turn. And that's what he's saying here because that's the second part of this. Not only are they on the guidance from their Lord, Allah says about these individuals, Ula'ika humu. Muflihun. There are those who are muflih. What is muflihun? They are successful. Shirat Amin explains this. He says that. He says here that the rububiyyah, from the word rub, okay, the rububiyyah here is a specific or particular type which comprises of a um, specific type of cultivation which therein there is a happiness attained in this world and the next. Right? Then Allah says, Ula'ika huma muflihun. All right? Share what they mean. He says, What? Muflihun here? What is this? He says that. He says, well, falah. Okay? The word falah huwa fawzu bin matloob. Okay? It is the success which is sought after. Okay, when najat min and it is the, yeah, I is it, 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 it is also the najat. It is not only just the success that is sought after; it is also the success which is um, a person like hopes to have. He says, "Fahiyah kalimatun jamia." It is a, com a comprehensive word which benefits jamia or shurur or husul jamia or Okay, which benefits all. Um, I mean, actually not benefits, the antifa, he says, which negates all types of evil and which occurs or brings about all types of good. 
He says here, <clears throat> the benefit that can be extracted, he says that the first benefit from the qualities of the people who have taqwa is having belief in the unseen. Why is having belief in the unseen is so important? He says, because having belief in those things which you can physically see is not considered to be iman. If you can see it, there's no need for you to be tried or tested with it. There is no conviction. You know it's there, right? You don't need to be convinced. If you can actually see it, then that's not considered to be iman. That's important. The animal you can encounter. Why? Because you can't you can't reject something you see. It's not possible for you to reject something you see. You see it in front of your face. You, I mean, you're not going to deny the fact that this person have two hands if you see that they actually have two hands. You're not going to deny, deny that this person is actually a man if you see that this person is a man, etc., etc., right? You're not. He says, Minha and min Also from the qualities of the people who have taqwa is that they establish the prayer. Meaning that this is general. It includes both the obligatory prayer and the surrogatory prayer. Based upon that, it is a desire to establish the prayer. And what do it mean by establish the prayer? It says this is from the quality of the king, meaning when it says establish it, meaning that a person performs it in a way, mustaqim uh, uh, wajh, meaning that he's corrected upon the way uh, that it is required in, uh, 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 in the correct manner, basically, in terms of his kushur, that he has humility, he has kushur while performing it, and his standing, and his bowing, and his sitting, and his prostrating, and other than that. Um, from the, the third benefits of these verses, uh, from the qualities of the muttaqin, the people who have talked about, they are those who spend out of that which Allah has provided them. This includes or entails um, the obligatory spending like zakat and also the supererogatory spending, voluntary spending like sadaqah, right? When fuck feast, feast and spending in all ways of good, okay? Which also is a cure from stinginess. A lot of people don't know that. So giving sadaqah is a means to repel yourself from being a miser or being a person who is stingy. Giving sadaqah, all right, helps you with that. If you want to fight against greed or if you want to fight against stinginess and so forth like that, be an individual who gives sadaqah. All right? The from that the knowledge which Allah SWT has bestowed upon that person. Okay, it's a means of sadaqah. The brother or sister who smile at one another, okay, is a means of sadaqah. Because when you smile at somebody, what do you do? You brighten up their day, all right? You soften their heart, okay? Um, you make them feel important, okay? When you smile at somebody, all right? It's, you never know what someone is going through. But if you see somebody and you say, how you doing, you know? Or in the case of us, assalamu alaikum and you give them a beautiful smile, it lowers their guards. It actually makes them feel a bit easy even regardless of what they're going through, right? And this is something that you can actually do. That's sadaqa, all right? Helping someone um, with their bags or with their belongings and so forth is a sadaqa. All of these things are considered sadaqa. So even the Prophet Sallallahu was mentioned in the authentic hadith that the rich and the poor came to him in terms of the virtues that was giving for those who give, right? And the poor came, you know, <laughs> they complained and they say, well, how can we ever be equal to those who are rich or have more than us if they get the same reward as we, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, the Prophet Muhammad Muhammad explains to them that they, that giving the sadaqah, Allah subhanahu wa will reward them actually. Give sadaqah no matter if they don't have much to give, give. Even if you got less to give, give something. You can give a smile, you can repel your harm, from other people. All of these are means of sadaqa, which also helps us to become better humans in the end anyway. Okay, Tayyip, he says the fourth benefit is that sadaqa to wasib baltida. Okay, giving sadaqa from Ill, Ill, um, illegitimate means. Okay, you stole something, for example, and then you're trying to give it away as sadaqa. That is something that is, you know, is invalid. Due to the fact that Allah says, from those things which we have provided for them. Why? Because the one who actually lost it, he doesn't own the wealth which he's trying to give away in the first place. But that's a little sadaqah So don't, don't accept his sadaqah, right? Well, minha, the fifth benefit is spending other than zakat. All right? Spending other than when it comes to spending outside of giving zakat, 
then the, the determination of the limit or how much you can give is not specific. With zakat, it is specific. Allah has given specific. But when it comes to giving outside of zakat, then that's not specific. You can give a lot, you can give less. There's no specific amount on it, okay? He says, uh, um, this is based upon the fact that Allah has made it permissible to spend jami' uh, al-mal fi turqo khayr, meaning that a person can give all of his wealth in the pathways of good, just as we see that was practiced and done by Abu Bakr, a Sadiq, when he gave all of his sadaqah, all right, all of his wealth as sadaqah. لكن هذا مشروط بما إذا لم يترتب عليه ترك واجب من الإنفاق على أهلي ونحوهم. And this is important. Sheikh Thamimi said that this is contingent and conditioned upon what? What is the condition? That an individual, by way of giving away all of your wealth, you do not neglect what is obligatory upon you. So you have children or you have a family that you might be obligated with you. You can't say, okay, I'm going to come out and give all of my wealth away and neglect the obligation of that family or those children. Heck of an example, right? If you have something obligatory that you have to do that that wealth can main, help you maintain to actually do to fulfill that obligation, then you can't give it all away. That's basically what he's saying. Okay, for why did Muhammad Allah to Tawbah? He says why? Because when it comes to obligatory things, they supersede or precede voluntary things, and that's a golden principle. All right, you can't be an individual talking about I'm so strong on night prayer. Nobody prays night prayer. I pray night prayer, but you neglect your five salawat. Your five salawat is obligatory. Your night prayer is voluntary. All right, you don't win by doing night prayer and neglecting the obligatory. You win by doing the obligatory. And actually doing night prayer. That's how you win. Okay? If you was to do the obligatory and neglect the night prayer, you still win it. But if you neglect the obligatory prayers and you do the night prayer, you're losing. So you have to understand that nothing trumps the obligation. As we have the Hadith Qudsi, we have the sacred Hadith uh, on the authority of Abu Hurairah, where it mentions that my servant draws near to me, will continue to draw near to me with that which I obligated upon him. Okay? And he does that which I obligate upon him. Okay, And he does the supererogatory until I start to love him. So the obligation even in that sacred hadith shows us it trumps the voluntary. So Shikha Tameen is mentioning that. And we get ready to stop here. He mentions a couple of more benefits. He says the sixth benefit is that is this, it actually here is censors and it criticizes being a bukhat, someone who is miser. Okay, wajwa an Allah in the point of reference here or the angle here that shows you that from the benefits extracted that it dispraise or criticize or censor miserness is that Allah subhanahu praises the munfiqin. He praises those who spend. So if you're not on those who give, then you don't deserve praise. And we know that miserness is a despicable characteristic which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned from in numerous verses, okay? He says, a point of notification here that we should be we should be conscious of. Allah does not mention uh, how this spending is to be done and whom to it should be given to. He says, however, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does mention in other verses that the praiseworthy spending or giving, right? Makana fi that which is done in the, in the pathway of Allah, جل, other than being extravagant or being someone who is uh, niggardly, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned in describing the qualities of the most uh, the servants of Al Rahman, he says, anfaku, those who give, those who spend, lam yusrifu, they are not extravagant, walam yakturu, and nor are they niggardly. Actually, they have a middle course. They have a balance in between it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't just go out, you know. They don't give, I'm just going to give, you know, extravagantly. No, they don't, I'm just going to spend any type of way I want to spend. No, they have a balance with it. Or I want to be niggardly in terms of that. Uh, no, they have a, what kind of thing they're going to be? He says the seventh benefit is that the qualities of those who have taqwa, they have iman in that which has been revealed to the Messenger وسلم, and that which has been revealed before him. The eighth benefit is that from their qualities of those who have taqwa is that they have absolute conviction 
in belief in the hereafter, and that should be, uh, it already preceded in the explanation of the tafsir. The ninth benefit is the importance of having Iman in the hereafter. Why? Because Iman, biha huwa ladi yabarathu al amad. Because having belief in the hereafter, it is that which inspires us. And it actually what? <laughs> Inspire us to do what? Actions. We have the yakun Allah ta'ala da'im and iman of he He said, for this reason, you will find Allah constantly mentioning uh, iman of he, having iman with it as a wajal, and having iman in Allah as a wajal, along with having iman with the hereafter. He says, if you come across an individual who says he doesn't believe in the resurrection or doesn't believe in the last day, then this individual would not, would not be instilled or um, moved to do good actions. Why would he do good actions? He don't believe that there would be a, a reward for it or any consequence for it whatsoever. So he's not going to be thrilled to carry out any righteous action. Yo, I, don't steal. My man, you shouldn't do that. I don't believe in there after. There are no consequences, so I can steal. Basically is what he's trying to say. Okay? <clears throat> he says, in the dunya faqa. He's an individual who's only going to work for the life of this world. He's not going to work for no imaginary world that he doesn't believe in uh, afterwards. So he's not going to do that. Right? <laughs> he says, Meaning that he's it's going to carry over. It's going to transition to the fact that whatever he considers to be a maslaha for him and that furthers him in this dunya. That's what he's going to do at the end of the day. So he is still, for example, he will fulfill his desires. He will lie. He will deceive, all, right? all of those different things. Yeah, like, you know, because he doesn't believe in the hereafter. He doesn't, ain't no consequences for what he's doing. So having belief in the hereafter, in reality, it is that which pushes and motivate us to do righteous actions. If we know that we will be rewarded and we'll be, we also will be brought to account for what we do in this life, we're going to act accordingly, inshallah, right? That's what that's supposed to do. The tenth benefit is that the safety that is guaranteed to these individuals upon this menhaj, upon those who endow with these qualities and their menhaj, due to the statement of Allah says, such are those, or these are such are those who are upon the guidance from the Lord. The eleventh benefit is that the rububiyyatullah, Allah's rububiyyat can be specific and it can be general. And we see both the specific and the general being utilized uh, when it comes, when Allah subhanahu wa tells us about the magicians of Fir'aun. When they said, See the word Rub? But here is Rub Alameen. We believe after they seen what Musa had and they knew that it was real and what they had wasn't real, it was an illusion. He said, we believe in the Rabbil Alameen. This is general Rububiyyah. We believe in the Lord of all that exists. Then look what they say after it. Rabbi Musa wa Harun. And it's a specific Rububiyyah. The Lord of Musa and Harun. All right? He's the Lord of, every, <laughs> of everything, right? But then they specify. So that's what he's showing you the difference. So Rububiyyah can be something that is specific and it can be something that is general. The last benefit that he brings, oh, yeah. The last benefit, almost the last benefit that he brings is that they met Allah huwa that the outcome for these individuals will be success. That's the outcome. Because Allah says, well, and then the last one is here. He says that Fala that the success is contingent and it is based upon those who are uh endowed with the qualities that were mentioned. Okay? For in Nasifat. He says, uh, He says, so if a person is deficient in any quality from the qualities that were mentioned, then there will be a deficiency in that person's success, and that will be based on what is left off from those qualities. All right? He says, why? What is to be correct from the statements of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah? Is that well, the dala alihi aklu or nakl that which is indicated by both the intellect and the text that iman increases and decreases, right? <laughs> he says, and have this not really been the case, then there wouldn't be no reason for there to be levels or degrees in paradise, okay? Why is there levels and degrees? It must mean that what there are some actions which are better than other actions. There are some, you know what I'm saying, that will give you these different levels and degrees. That's what he says. He says, um, 
the hadith. Okay, and here he says he will connect um, that which is um, that comes in the hadith. That the people of paradise, they will be able to see the companions of the ghurf. Just like you can see that big star, it's hitting within the horizon. And they say, O Messenger of Allah, they said that these will be the stations. O Messenger of Allah, with these, they asked him a question, will these be the stations of the prophets that none can reach them other than them? Uh, the Prophet said, no. I swear by the one in whom hands my soul is, These are from them who believe in Allah. And they believe in the messengers. Best Allah is, the, Allah is to be from them. And that this is not specifically for the people, for the uh, for the prophets. Well, we said that was incorrect, inshallah ta'ala, from any of the translation that we did today. As for myself, and whoever said it's correct, it's from Allah. Brothers and sisters, these qualities help you to protect you from the shaitan. And even though we talk about protecting your home, imagine if you are indulged with these qualities, you can also be protected from the shaitan himself. All right, so understand the difference. Having these qualities protect you from the shaitan. Reciting the, this surah, believing in this surah, being guided by this surah, protect your home from the shaitan, okay? So you wanna be trying to try to indulge these qualities, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for tuning in.